Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Healing Home. I'm your host, Michelle, and for all things Healing Home, as always, you can head to michelleshealinghome.com for my blog and my store, downloadable PDFs, you name it. You can find it at michelleshealinghome.com. And a shout out to all the patrons out there. You are very much appreciated. Today is a special day here on The Healing Home, like they usually are, but this one to me is a little extra special because I am going to be joined today by Amanda Dawn Balmer, affectionately known as ADV, out there in, uh, in internet land, in real world land. That is what she goes as. A lot of people know her as that. And I am just honored to have her because she's such a wonderful wealth of knowledge. She is so well informed in so many areas of life. And I look up to her in so many ways as a healer and an herbalist and a woman who is running a business and an aspiring medicine woman. From Amanda's bio, Amanda Dawn Vollmer, affectionately known as ADV, is a renowned health expert and best-selling author with an impressive breadth of knowledge on natural healing and holistic wellness practices. With over 20 years of experience in the field, ADV is a sought-after speaker and educator who has inspired countless individuals to take control of their health and live vibrant, thriving lives. So without further ado, help me in welcoming Amanda Vollmer to the stream. Hello, hello. Hi, Michelle. Hello. How are you? Great. How are you? Doing great. Nice and uh, it's it's starting to warm up here uh, after our artificial blast of uh, cold air that came through pretty much the whole entire country and uh, (laughs) not sure up in Canada if it was the same thing, but boy, was it a spectacle to uh, to watch. (laughs) So, yeah, uh, we've had a mild, quite a mild winter so far, (laughs) which is did you guys did you experience any of this uh, bruja that happened? Did you have any kickback from the spraying and stuff like that? Oh, I mean, they're constantly spraying us. Uh, you can see what they're doing. Like in, when you watch it for long enough, you can tell when they're trying to gear up to create trouble. And uh, we did get like a huge dump of snow, but we really hadn't much re- retaining snow, which we really need because. The cold weather here, it kills off the bugs and the eggs. So you get less things like mites and um, even ticks and all these sorts of things. So we did need like a good killing, like cold. So we d- I, I, <laughs> that was a long time coming because we hadn't had um, minus 20 yet this winter. So it got to minus 20 Celsius uh, and uh, we had a lot of snow and now it's freezing rain and warmed up again. I, I think what they're trying to do right now because the triggers for hot and cold, when you go, um, when you do hot and cold, it, it shifts the blood in the body and it triggers often detoxes. <laughs> and ah. I think they're trying to make, they're trying, they've, they've loaded and primed everyone with so much waste and, and poison in their bodies that now all they need to do is just keep triggering them to get sick at certain times by fluctuating the weather, hot, cold, hot, cold, you know, or you go outside into really hot territory and into cold air, like AC back and forth, that also can trigger the same thing. Uh, so I was like, I see what you guys are up to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'd have to agree with that. And it's just crazy because there's places in the United States that hadn't seen snow like this in a long time, you know, and I'm originally from Wisconsin, which is a cold area, but over the last handful of years, it's been very warm in the winter. So, but you know, my family was just dumped on this year, which is an anomaly now. So everybody was like, oh God, we haven't had this in so long that they just weren't used to it, which is really interesting to me. But I'm with you on the fluctuating of the blood temperature. And I actually remember you talking about that in your presentation at Flattoberfest, which was amazing, by the way. And I don't mean to be such a fangirl right off the bat, but I just had to say that my fiance and I really appreciated what you brought to the table. You stole the show, in my opinion, and it was just, it was a cla- it was so classy, and you did such a great job presenting a Q&A with the audience, and it was just wonderful. So thank you for that, and thank you for all you do in general. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't going to go off book, but what happened was I wasn't sure the presentation style and I hadn't prepared my presentation um, appropriately for this huge screen in the back. 
Um, and then I, so then we were trying to last minute make something happen. And I said, you know what? I think, I think the spirit of God is coming. <laughs> I hear Hark says, <laughs> no, don't do this. It's, it's getting too complicated. You know, when, when things become too difficult and complicated, you know, it's wrong. You're, you're not supposed to push. It was that feeling I got. I said, all right, here we go off book. We'll see what happens. And that was all you know, out of nowhere, really, or out of everywhere. <laughs> so thank well, you. Yeah, kudos. <laughs> Before we jump into it, I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. I mean, most people watching probably know who you are, but for anyone out there who's unfamiliar with your work, please allow them to know where they can find you and uh, introduce yourself in any way you'd like to. Well, yeah, uh, I've been in the holistic healing arts, trained as a naturopath, uh, graduated in 2008 from Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine in Toronto. Um, my background is chemistry and biotechnology, ironically enough, <laughs> which is when I started screaming from the rooftops about genetically modified organisms. I was like, this shit's dangerous. Okay. <laughs> Glad I know how to do it. Now I know what's wrong with it. Uh, and then I uh, did a lot of traveling. I've been really um, a seeker of knowledge, you know, my whole life. So uh, when I learn something that naturally it just sort of builds up and you want to teach. And my whole life was about really assisting and helping people achieve their maximum wellness. And, and really from a perspective of we, we need to come to a place where we can fix the problems that we have but it really starts with ourselves and um, helping people get out of the system completely, like get out of the slavery of the system um, and the traps therein and become more wise and grow up spiritually and, and emotionally into our adult selves that we can take self-responsibility, uh, become more consciously aware of our triggers, our emotions, our or trauma and to, uh, well, I got pregnant and then I started a business because I realized there really wasn't a lot for babies, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 years ago, like natural stuff. Like I was looking for a diaper rash cream, couldn't find it. So I thought I'll make it. Why not? Uh, can't be that difficult. Right. You know? And then I got into it. I really loved formulation and it made sense with my chemistry background that it was natural for me to understand the, the chemistry between everything I was doing and then pull in my knowledge from my training of herbal medicine into the concoctions I was doing. And I just began to invent for a long, for years, still to this day, I just invented another cream that's going to be made next week. Uh, that because Anna's wild yam cream got very popular and, uh, I, uh, and I've been wanting my own yam cream. I've been doing using just tinctures and DMSO, um, this sort of stuff. But now I thought people were asking me, do I have one because they can't get this cream anymore since it's on back order. So I thought I'll make it, but I'll add DMSO into it. So like, these are the things I've been really working on and doing is just keep creating, uh, finding solutions at work. And I always just want something that does what it says it's going to do. If, if I find a product or I, or I, if, you know, or someone asked me about something and I, and I apply it and it doesn't really do have the action, then I leave it behind. And so my whole life I've been sort of collecting the things that work, um, through my practice. And that's what I bring to the table. I started to learn about dimethyl sulfoxide and wrote a book about it. And that uh, was really important because, again, there's so much suppression. There it is. There's so much suppression of information. But as well, there's also so much information now. There's like both. Where, where do you even go <laughs> in that sea of information to now organize it and catalog it in a meaningful manner that gives you benefit rather than becoming overwhelmed by the sheer volume of it? and lost in the cacophony of the, the two different sides of all the information, right? And now we, so we have a different problem <laughs> to deal with now. We have too much information and not usable information uh, that's reasonable for the amount that one being could hold, you know? <laughs> 
um, just learn out information for people and present like in my sub stacks, for example, my sub stack articles or my blog articles. And then I was doing one on one, you know, patients and seeing patients. I really got burnt out with that model of, of this way, even though I do see emergency or take emergency cases still. But the what I realized is it's changed now. People need to become their own doctors. They need to learn the, the elegance of the body. They need to unlearn the fear programming from the system and then take charge of their own health and become aware of the uh, medicine available around them and create their own dispensaries. And then I decided I would stop seeing clients one-on-one -on -one and begin to create courses, classes, groups, and a whole membership, uh, which we did launch in the summer called yummy.doctor. And I've been building courses. And uh, right now I'm, we're working on a whole uh, A to Z directory of all the things that I've said over the last, you know, 15 years or so about how to treat the body. And we're, 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 we're pulling everything together. Uh, there's a lot of writing, a lot of extra researching, a lot of refreshing going on right now uh, to, again, help that knowledge become usable and, and, and um, easy to access and then create a whole community of people who understand it, who know it, who've applied it. And then can everyone can jump in and help one another through whatever's going on. Um, and that will just continue to grow. And that's all, that's the projects we're working on now. I'm writing another book. I'm going to keep that in the hush <laughs> the low down right now, but there's another collaboration going on. Uh, it's great to travel now, finally <laughs> to get out of Canada. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go to Confluence again, um, this, this year in April for the, that uh, eclipse in Texas. And then I'm going to go to probably, I haven't set it up yet, but Music and Sky is coming to North California in um, in August, and I'm gonna I'm gonna those are on my list. So yeah, there's it's a, it's a it's a lot, but I'm excited because this is the lot one of the parts of my long term dream to do these things and to compile this information, get everything out of my head and into paper, and uh, and then the next stage would be to consolidate you know, all the uh, creation of creams and lotions and salves and medicines and tea that we offer uh, and have a uh, workshop, have a clinic that is um, multifactorial, meaning I'll train other practitioners to these, to a teaching method, a specific teaching method and a specific clinical method and more to rehabilitate doctors that have come out of the system. There's lots and nurses too, and other practice and other like RMTs that don't even want to be licensed or, you know, there's people coming out of the system all the time. Um, and we need, we need still things that the hospitals are doing, but for ourselves, like if we need an IV, if we need a saline drip, you know, if we need someone who knows how to do stitches or reset a bone, these sorts of things and really create our new, our new hospital system, if you will. Uh, a lot of people won't go to hospitals anymore, including me, and we need to figure out what, what we're doing with this uh, coming change, <laughs> if you will, the changes, uh, the split in society, whatever we're calling this uh, Armageddon or <laughs> apocalypse. Uh, yeah, so it's it's good times. Oh man, brilliant. This is That is so exciting to hear all of this, uh, especially that you're working on another book. That is amazing. And I'm not surprised at all because healing with DMSO as I held up, that was my introduction to you in 2020. A friend of mine said, you got to read this book. And I was like, okay. And I read it and what, oh my God, where has this woman been all my life? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, just amazing because I had never even heard about DMSO at that point either. And uh, as an herbalist, I was just focused mostly on herbs for healing, which still is the top shelf for me. But with DMSO, it's right on that top shelf along with them because you can blend blend DMSO with so many things safely when you know your dilutions, which you go through so beautifully in your book and you, you know, step by step how you can do it. There's beautiful recipes in there, how to help pets, how to help yourself, all common ailments, a little bit more advanced ailments as well. So to know that you have another book in the works is is very exciting and you know i'm I, i'm really excited to hear too that you're coming back to the states uh this summer that's really awesome 
And uh, I look forward to trying to attend one of those festivals because that's of those two, um, Music and Sky, I'd like to try and get to. Confluence, I've heard, is great too, though. So that and is that one's in June. Someone someone corrected me. Um, it was August, but they said it was it's to okay. 24th, the Music and Sky. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I see that. that. Thank you. Uh, that's a shout out yep. to uh, Hank Flatter Hippie. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes. All right. I um, I want to talk about how you were first going to become a veterinarian, which I find very intriguing. And I love that part of your story because I'm an animal lover myself, particularly cats, and have taught myself a lot of things about natural and herbal cat care, have shared a lot of information about this and um, applied all those things to our cat as well and saw great results. And so I would love if you could tell the people a little bit about that story of uh, going into the veterinarian medicine and then what led you to naturopathic college and deciding to pursue uh, becoming a naturopathic doctor? Yeah, it's interesting. I had, I, I was actually going to be a visual artist. <laughs> that was, uh, that was what all I wanted to do was paint. And uh, I, I thought, oh, well, maybe this isn't the best direction for me. Uh, because, well, for a few reasons, one, I thought maybe it's not going to make me enough money or maybe it's just, not, maybe it's silly. Maybe it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I just can be an artist, you know, and, and it's not realistic. And then the other one was, uh, I was realizing that, um, when I wanted to go to OCAD, that was the college I was preparing to go to. They, this is the irony. They wanted a specific portrait for the portfolio and I'm so rebellious that I just, I didn't want to do a real live face portrait that they were asking for. I wanted to do something abstract and I didn't want them to tell me my style. I didn't want to be dictated to that, that I had to make something look realistic when I wasn't interested in, in realism at the time. I was interested in abstraction and depth of depth, um, or field depth. Um, anyway, that, but then later <laughs> I actually took a course on portrait painting and I loved it. I, I thought it was fantastic and challenging and, you know, I could be, I could do like that, the cat portraits sort of thing. I was thinking of doing a few portraits of my own cats. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So it was, but because of that, I went, forget it. You know, I'm not doing this. That sort of rebellion came through me. And I remember sitting down and making a list and I made four call and the things that I love to do or things I love in general. Here is a list of all the things that I have some sort of skill set in or some sort of knowledge base in already. Uh, here are all the things that might make me money, might be like vocational um, or career based. A list all those things. And then the other, the final column was, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was now. It was, it was probably, um, I, oh, training. That was what, uh, scholastic training needs and this sort of stuff, what I had, what I need, that sort of stuff. And when I sat and I looked at that list, I started making connections and really what came up was just animals, like over and over again, animals, animal care, animal husbandry, animal, whatever. It was all about animals. And um, I decided, okay, maybe I'll become a vet tech. And I wasn't thinking big back then, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be a vet tech, okay? I like animals. I, I go to, I was uh, volunteering at this uh, wildlife rehabil rehabilitation center. That should, you know, that adds into my volunteer time. And I said, but then the, I actually couldn't uh, go into the college that I didn't have the prereqs for that. So then I decided I'd go to university and then I would get a degree so I could become a vet. And I said, why not? Just go all the way, like go all the way, do it. And I just sort of decided I'd do it. And I went that route uh, to prep, but it, it turned differently in the interview at Guelph University <laughs> when they weren't interested in what I had to offer because I was already tuned into holistic veterinary care. And there were no holistic vets at this time. And in fact, it was considered 
heresy to even consider something so crazy that you would blend natural medicine and animal care. It was like the, for these administrators and teachers, that was like destroying vet medicine. It was dangerous to them. Wow. Uh, and that was my first clue that not everybody's honest and on the up and up or really cares about advancing science or advancing you know, treatment protocols or really helping. They, they have, and it has nothing to do with the, the, the um, pure hearted goal that I, <laughs> that I naively thought all of mankind won't have naturally and want because I was young and <laughs> thought that that's, this is how it should be. So whatever. And uh, I just, I went back to my mentor. I was living in Edmonton and I went to Dr. Stephen Marsden and I said, well, that's not going to work what do I do now? Right. And then, uh, he said, why don't you become a naturopathic doctor? You know, not a lot of naturopaths see animals also. And I said, Oh, okay, that's interesting. And I ended up doing that route, but it wasn't the first goal. As I was learning and as I was into this medicine, I started to realize, uh, that I had a gift for it, that I, it was part of me. It was natural for me to understand it. And that got me excited that I was uh, tuned into my correct path. And uh, later I did do a lot of training with animal medicine and continue to have animal clients as well. Uh, in fact, I just wrote a course on canine cancer uh, that people can purchase if they do have a dog with cancer. And it can be adapted to cats, of course. I'm a cat lady as well. One yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably have like more as I get older. <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> oh my God, me too. Um, I'm like, oh yeah, cat videos. I'm like, oh God, I want you too and you. <laughs> I know the different types of cats as well. I'm really looking differently at cats now for some reason. And I'm, I'm got my eye on the I, uh, one day. I really hope a Maine Coon, a big Maine Coon finds me. I want like a big rag doll Maine Coon mix or something like that. I want fluffy I want a big fluffy yes you know big monstrous <laughs> that you can walk <laughs> i know i'm in the same boat i see like uh, the norwegian forest cats and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> i want to take you on the mountain <laughs> that's right yeah yeah that's it's awesome. really it's really cool yeah well i love that i love that story too and i love the detail about them turning you away. It's not nice that they turned you away, but obviously here you are today and it all worked out. But um, very interesting when we get these little insights into these professions like you did, like you've had, and I'm sure a lot of people listening have had little insights into realizing that, oh, it's actually not set up for us or it's not set up for our pets to thrive. Okay. And it's like the nod from the universe to kind of be like, just move on and you're going to figure it out on your own terms. And you have, and that's, what's really cool about it. I got to ask if you are familiar with Andrew T. Jones, he's a veterinarian in Canada and kind no, of has a, he has a really great book called veterinarian secrets. And one of the things I love about the book is that in the back of the book, he provides you with basically an intake sheet for your animal. So he's basically prepping you to be able to do exams at home or if your hat, you know, shows you how to look at your cat or dog, places that you need to be paying attention to. He goes through acupuncture, acupressure, massage, but he has a, a story that he was in Canada practicing, had his own practice. He started putting out newsletters, uh, you know, through his website talking about what he was learning with natural pet care because he was giving his dog regular vaccines and then his dog came down with cancer. And once that happened, he realized, okay, something's wrong. And he started to, re to reassess these schedules that the animals are supposed to be given for vaccines and was just kind of like tapping into stuff, looking into alternative routes to help his dog. Unfortunately, his dog ended up passing away, but that was his moment where he's like, okay, I have to do something about this and the veterinarian board in Canada basically took him to court for it and said, okay, you're going against these codes. 
what have you, you either can pay us all this money and have fines or whatever, or you give your practice away. You have to give up the practice and then you can move on. And he ended up giving up the practice, but now has a thriving career on his own right by teaching people. So basically kind of going in the opposite direction and being able to make it work for himself. And it's stuff like that that keeps me inspired. It, I know it probably keeps other people inspired to just continue on the pursuit of this knowledge to go towards these less allopathic routes. Because to me, in my in my eyes, I know humans are really targeted with allopathy, but I think animals, they get it really, really bad. Like it's really bad. And I think a lot of people too, don't pay attention to a lot of things. And I think that's part of the whole thing we were talking about in the beginning where there's just so much information. There's a lot of bad information. There's a lot of good information. It's really hard to decipher, but at the end of the day, it's all about distraction. So what can we, how can we keep these people distracted from themselves, from paying attention, from literally just paying attention to their pets. And I think noticing their patterns is something that gets ignored a lot of times. And just through doing things like that, you know, we can learn a lot. Um, just by paying attention and uh, using critical thought. So I think that that kind of goes out the window a little bit in a lot of ways, but specifically with the animals. So glad mm -hmm. to uh, feel the kinship with you with that, with that for sure. Cause it's really important. Absolutely. I, I really want to just jump into DMSO a little bit too, and focus on that. And if you could go through just talk about DMSO and what it is for people who don't know or who aren't familiar with it and uh, why you feel as though it's such an important substance to have on hand. Yeah, well, it's an extract from trees, dimethyl sulfoxide DMSO, um, and it is uh, extracted from the lignin. So it's a component of the lignin of the tree and it's bound to it. And it, it is essentially the strength of the tree uh, when you when you see it upright and strong and and holding well that drink that it, so that's holding that together you know and once you uh, extract it um once extracted uh it has is a very powerful solvent and it's tree medicine and you know once i realized its power because of its transdermal nature which means when you put it on your skin it goes into the skin rapidly uh, I thought this is a unique feature of something. Not everything is transdermal. And then I found out it's not only transdermal, but it's a carrier. It also will carry things with it. And, uh, that is another property that blew my mind. I'm like, so not only is it opening the door to go into the body, but it will carry low molecular weight things with it. Now it won't carry heavy stuff. Like there's so much hate. Oop, you our broke natural up remedies out there. It's unbelievable. But oh, am you I okay now? Just a little bit. Let me you, just see. You just said there's okay. There's so much. I think I'm just going to um give me a second. I'm, I'm just closing stuff down. One second. Okay. Yep. Take your time. There was too much open. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so um yeah, the the idea that DMSO is uh is transdermal and carries low molecular weight. Uh, you know, nutrients through is amazing, but there's a lot of misinformation. And um, when I started to do research on this incredible substance, I was blown away. It's very highly studied. And I was reading study upon study upon study. I was reading case upon case and there were, it was so safe there. There was no deaths. Uh, you know, there was nothing um, uh, dangerous about it other than you have to learn how to dilute it, as you mentioned, but the real, uh, the real power was in this multifactorial manner in which it operates. This is something that can take away uh, infl inflammation, but not, not in a way where it's stopping the healing. Because when you have inflammation, it means a body is trying to heal something. And when DMSO comes on the scene, because of its ability to help things shuttle in and out, and also to assist in that shuttling, you don't need uh, the infl inflammatory markers to loosen the tissue to allow for these wastes to be removed and this sort of thing. The Unless it's uh, too large or too cumbersome for another method, 
it, the inflammation will be quelled and the upregulation of the, of the detoxification mechanisms will be seen because it does increase the, um, oxygen, um, oxygen flow. So it increases blood flow and oxygen flow to the region. It's bacteria, which means that it stops anything proliferating and damaged tissue in the area and making a lot of wastes. And it continues to allow for the, um, the tissue to repair with giving and lending oxygen and sulfur into the tissues. I mean, for healing, it accelerates it. Um, it can be used in every orifice. Um, it does have a characteristic smell, <laughs> which can be nullified um, with using things like pomegranate juice because um, polyphenols will completely eradicate the scent or the odor or the, of the decay of the DMSO. Um, I'm actually working with a, a gentleman, a researcher who worked with Dr. Stanley Jacob in his laboratories when he was alive. And Dr. Jacob is considered the godfather or grandfather of DMSO, at least in our understanding of it in America. And um, he, he worked with him, this gentleman. And that's the, the, he came up with a patent for polyphenol use in DMSO. So we're working together to come up with some sort of solution for like the odor uh, but for now, pomegranate juice will tone it down quite a bit uh, if people are complaining, if you're using it and people are complaining. That's really the only thing that's, I would say, neg a negative quality, you know, for for DMSO uh, other than misuse, you know, blending it with things you shouldn't. Um, but people will say, oh, uh, you shouldn't put it on dirty skin because it'll carry bacteria through the skin. And that's nonsense. Um, a lot of fear mongers out there that are actually truthers or, um, or holistic in, in the way they present a lot of other material. So it's not just that the allopaths are attacking our natural medicine, they've infiltrated our world. And now even our own <laughs> people are trashing our natural medicine and natural remedies and vitamins and nutrients that have, uh, we've been fighting to keep, uh, for, because big pharma squash and finally gotten people to this state using everybody by saying it's dangerous. And I, I'm writing an article right now on vitamin D. Uh, at some point, I'll have time to finish it. I really am upset about the way people are attacking these things. Same thing with DMSO. They'll give me like a, they'll give me a paper, you know, 60% of scientific papers are garbage. They'll give me a scientific paper as if it's nail in the coffin. That's the end of the story. But did they read the study? <laughs> Mostly no. Did they understand that um, when you take something out of living tissue and you put it in a Petri dish, that its behaviors will be completely different without active organs involved? So a lot of people will say, but it's cytotoxic. Look at this DMSO study. It says that it's cytotoxic and therefore or dangerous. And when you read the study, of course, there's no in vivo here. This is an extracted cellular tissue. You add DMSO and watch what happens. But what happens is the cell wants to detox and cleanse. And it begins to digest those materials and mobilize things, but it has nowhere to go. Of course, the cell will fester, and then you will get these cytotoxic effects. And uh, ironically, this is the exact same um, sleight of hand that virologists do to prove that there are viruses. They take tissue out of uh, the living condition, put it in a Petri dish, treat it with all sorts of chemicals, and also add other DNA and bacteria and other things, um, into, or sorry, uh, antibacterials into it, like antibiotics, like gentamicin. They will create a cytotoxic effect. And what they're doing is saying that the result of the cytotoxins is a virus. <laughs> That's how mentally warped science has, you know, really been got has gotten because it's illogical. There's no controls here, right? And uh, same thing with the DMSO, right? They're not realizing that those materials have to travel to the organs now of elimination. They have to go to the liver. They have to get out of the body. There's nowhere to go. There you go. You have your your negative study. 
Uh, so it's a very powerful remedy that can, as you said, is really exciting for blends because of this carrying capacity. I mean, you can feed yourself vitamins with mixing it uh, to with DMSO and putting it on your skin. They've kept people alive using this uh, who cannot eat, right? Uh, that's It's very... Um, exciting that we that it's found and it's still not i'll still ask people do you know what dmso is <laughs> still don't know okay <laughs> yeah oh well <laughs> here's my book <laughs> yeah exactly i know i i feel the same way about it and i've been confronted in the same way with from people that i wouldn't expect to truthers or more holistically minded people who whoa 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 dmso you got to be really careful with that, you know? And I say, I know that's the whole point. You know, that's, that's one of the things about it is just like the plant, just like plants, there's plants that are considered poison plants. Yet these poison plants, the nightshades, they are some of the most powerful, profound healers in the plant kingdom, in my opinion. And what does it come down to? understanding the dose, understanding how to properly take it, when to take it, when not to take it, how much to take, and for the signs to know when you may have taken too much. Because that's what I always remember about learning about like poke root, where it was, okay, you want to start with one drop and see what one drop feels like. And then you take a second drop and you see what you feel like. And my, my rule of thumb that I learned early on with that one was, if you're taking pro poke root and your head starts to feel disconnected, you start to kind of feel that floaty sort of feeling <laughs> that the Solanaceae family loves to bring to you. That's that's your limit. That's where you say, OK, so that was four drops. I, that's all I need. And I find the same thing with the DMSO. It kind of tells you, it guides you. It allows you to experiment. And as you, I've heard you say many times, being the mad scientist on yourself first, which is always very important, uh, as you know very well as a, as a medicine woman and as an herbalist, that you got to try this stuff on yourself first before you're giving it out to people, because that is the best way to learn, obviously, because you're going to get that, that firsthand experience. And for me, I've had so many successes with DMSO that I can't, I can't even imagine living in a world without it or not having it stocked in my apothecary at all times. Um, I've given it uh, to my grandmother. I've given it to my stepdad for frozen shoulder, which was one of the things I learned from you that it's good for because he was being given cortisone shots and his whole arm just, my mom sent me a photo and I was appalled and I thought, oh my God, no, I'm going to make you something with DMSO. And I told him how to use it. And I diluted it properly for someone who's never used it before. And I actually paired it with white willow bark. And I don't, I find that white willow, oh my goodness, with DMSO, they're like a married couple. They just get along so well, but he put it on in the first night and um, he was able to move his shoulder very soon after that. The next morning he said he woke up and the swelling went down, the bruising was starting to go down. And uh, yeah, pretty amazing success stories that I've had with that, specifically with the white willow bark. So I wanted to ask you, uh, what are some of your favorite herbs to incorporate with, with DMSO or what, what are some of the herbs that stand out to you that you've had some really great success stories with pairing with DMSO? Yeah, I've been uh, actually experimenting with tincturing. I've been using DMSO as a tincturing medium. Uh, and in fact, the wild yam cream that I formulated that hopefully I can make next week is, I beta tested it. It works really well. Uh, I've added DMSO into it. And what I've done is I've extracted wild yam, the chaste berry, and the black cohosh, which those three are some of my favorites. Um, with the DMSO as extraction, I've extracted it through a, uh, a water method and an alcohol extraction. So there's going to be multiple extraction methods and an oil extraction, multiple extraction methods in the cream. And this overlay makes sure that you have all of the herbs, uh, uh constituents involved rather than just selecting for a few. And, and I, I find that that's the safest way to use herbals, generally speaking, because they're so well balanced in the body. You're not going to uh, overwhelm the system when it has all of the components and cofactors involved with it. Uh, so that 
I've been doing um, all kinds of blends, whatever, whatever I fancy. I, I really love dandelion. Uh, I love dandelion. I just love it. Um, I love dandelion in all its forms because the whole plant is medicinal. It's, it's edible. Um, and I've done uh, various DMSO extracts with dandelion. My favorite to do, uh, if you remember in the spring when they come up and they're bright yellow, take them, take the flower heads. And so you can actually, it's ideal if you pick off the, the flowers out of the out of the stem, but whatever, uh, and then put that in the DMSO and you'll get this gorgeous bright, it takes all the carotenoids and everything out. So you get all this bright yellow, beautiful, glorious <laughs> DMSO. And that's what we add into my dandelion cream and lotion. Um, so it's only seasonal because we run out. So we have, so the creams are kind of like in flux, like in different parts of the year, like how much of, of, so when you buy it in the spring, it has more flower energy. And when you buy it in the fall, it has more root energy and this kind of stuff, which I really love because we change, we're cyclical, we have flow, we have a biorhythm, you know, and, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to have fun with. And, and any, anyone can do this. You can use extracted, um, herbs with using it like as a tincture medium. Um, I've used, uh, I've done sweet grass before to, you know, I've done, I mean, I love so many herbs. I grow so many here. Motherwort's huge. I've done motherwort. Um, motherwort grows literally every, um, I'm like a weed here. <laughs> uh, nettles, nettles are a great one. Grows wild, blends well with DMSO, very nutritious for the skin. Um, what else? I mean, it's just, there's so many, like it's overwhelming. Like I make a bunch of herbal blends and I love using the synergy, you know, between plants, uh, to help as helpers. That's just, as you know, I mean, this is part of our training is to learn how to blend and all the ratios and all that. Um, but then you throw DMSO in with that too. And you're getting, you're getting double the power that you would say, in like a water extract. Now there's just different applications for the herbs. And as you said, which I wanted to reiterate is that the dose is in the, the, the dose is the poison. So the dose is what matters and how you use it. And not only that, but everything works in harmony with itself. And so, uh, you never really want to take one single thing without understanding how they all work together in the body with other cofactors and make sure that you're not in an imbalanced state um, with that. And that's why I love herbs because <laughs> you rarely will get into that state when you use whole herbs, because it will come with everything and the cofactors and the things that's needed for the body to metabolize it. Um, yeah, it, those are so, just a few. I mean, there's, um, I have a huge garden. I'm growing it each year. I'm getting uh, container gardener gardens uh, going and I'm trying to figure out like a food forest sort of style, but my favorite, I get distracted because I just want to go pick all the wild plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the summer, I'm like, anyway, I'm off because, oh, I just noticed the colt's foot is up. I'm going to go get the colt's foot. I think I did an extract with colt's foot with DMSO last uh, last springtime when it came up because I was so eager. It's the first flower up in the in the spring. <laughs> and when I see it, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes, it's like the uh, uh, it's the rejoicing. It's like the hallelujah <laughs> after the winter when we start seeing those first yeah. flowers. Oh, I love that. Yes, I I love. I I was so I've been so excited to talk herbs with you and plants because um, I just I I I sense and feel and have since the beginning your strong connection with the natural world and your connection to just being a medicine woman. And you also are a Reiki master, have been trained with energetic healing and, and things like that, which I just find to be very valuable. And I think the plants also, it's like the plants, they, um, they're Reiki masters for us in some way. I feel as though when you're tuned into this world, you hear these plants, like you said, the colt's foot. The colt's foot was beckoning you. It's like, I'm putting out signs, baby. I want you to come out and find me. And I love talking to people about those 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 feelings you get those sensations when you just know it's just time to go do it and when you tune in and listen to the voice of the plant and what they can impart 
to you just by sitting with them and not even making the medicine or, or, or imbibing in it. And it's one of my favorite all time joys of being an herbalist and what I've actually like worked really hard on to tune into. But, you know, at the at the same time, you realize once you start working with this stuff or if you're a gardener that you actually don't have to like try so hard they're there and they're just like, they're wanting to make the connection. So it's really cool. And I, I love thinking about you blending things in your apothecary and stuff and using DMSO with the plants. It's really beautiful. And I wanted yeah. to ask you a question that came up while I was preparing for our interview. And it's something that I just kind of started thinking about. So I don't even have a concrete answer for it, but I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. So I love the correspondences of plants and the Zodiac. And I'm sure you understand that. And I wondered what your thought would be if you were, or we were to correspond DMSO to a Zodiac sign or a planet. What do you think that would, what do you think that correspondence would be? Mm -hmm. I have to think on that. Well, we've got heat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with a, a fire sign. Mm -hmm. It's fast. So again, we are in the fire sign territory. Um, fluid, which we could attribute to the water sign. Uh, but it's, I would say more so on leaning fire. Um, I would say, except it's anti-inflammatory, which is again, more cooling like you. So it's, it's got hot and cold properties, right? Yeah. Jeez. Um, maybe an Aries <laughs> hot yeah. and fast and get her done impatient. <laughs> <laughs> the rain. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I like Maybe that. Mars, I, Mars, yeah, Mars and Aries. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I might, I'll think about it more. But that was my, that's the first on first blush. Yeah, yeah. I kind of just wanted to plant the seed for you because I think it could be an interesting thing for you to explore and talk about in the future. Because I, I know I'm going to think about it as well. And I went to Mars too right away. Thought of that fire, that driving, and then I also did like you thought about the uh, inflammation reduction, the cooling and stuff. And I thought of Mercury because I thought about that quicksilver, mm -hmm. and I thought about the tree, and I picture the tree as the psychopomp, and it is the pillar, and it is the bridge. It is the world tree. And then in the Norse mythology, I always forget the name of the squirrel, but there's a squirrel that travels up and down the tree and he's like the psychopomp. And I, I imagine DMSO being some sort of psychopomp, like bringing us, you know, it like brings you to these realms yeah. and takes you out because when you consume the DMSO and I, I took it for the first time. Uh, a handful of months ago, I took it internally because I was dealing with uh, some sort of ear ailment. I don't even want to say infection because it, I don't know if it was an infection. It was just something that took the wind out of my sails, basically. And I literally like prayed to my guides, what do I need to do right now? Because I was in so much pain and I just heard DMSO. And I took it you know, internally for the first time. And I actually followed your your protocol on taking it internally. And it was like, instantly it went right to my ear and the pain was just gone and I slept and I was just like oh my god and it really was I woke up and it felt like I had been transported back <laughs> to this realm from the realm of DMSO and so that's where that mercurial kind of energy mm -hmm. came through for me with the DMSO because there's some sort of like I don't know uh, some sort of traveling element going on for sure so Oh yeah. yeah. You're right on that. Cause the, the traveling is so unique with it. I yes. mean, it's pain. It's, it's claim to fame is, is pain. And so I always like leave that off last because I want people to understand the properties, but I mean, it's a painkiller. I mean, this is like a nat as natural painkiller as you're, you're going to find and a most effective one, uh, but not just killing pain, repairing. <laughs> That's why you can sprain your ankle and be back on it in a week when you use DMSO or even less. I've had people come back from a sprained ankle using DMSO in three days. That's crazy. So, wow. I mean, the, the recovery is just, you're right. There's speed, there's movement. It knows where to go. It, 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 and it travels with water. It uses a relationship with water, which is also fascinating, right? How it holds hands, uses it like a motor, uses water as like a propeller motor in the body. And and water is has a, its electricity, right? We have the fourth phase of water. We have water as a knowledge base as like a, um, a network through the body that can shoot things, the speed of light in the body. Right. 
and it just uses water to propel itself um, <clears throat> to where it needs to go. Um, yeah, it's a massive, massive painkiller because a lot of pain is inflammation, um, obviously, and a lot of um, uh, things that are broken, things that like the, sh the, the frozen shoulder, like all of these concerns of, uh, of pain, it's going to increase tissue recovery. So um, that's why I do like to blend it with, depending on the scenario. So it'll be DMSO and whatever, depending on what part of the body, what's happened to the body, what nutrient I think it will be needed or what herb will be needed to complement the DMSO to make sure that the nutrition is available or the cofactors are available so that you don't stall in uh, the healing, right? And then, and then, you know, it mobilizes waste. And I think the, if we wanted to go where like the most risk would be is for people who have a lot of metals in their body, specifically um, metal amalgams, mercury based amalgams, uh, because DMSO, so what's happened, depending on the situation, people have these metals in their body, and they tra can travel to the brain especially mercury can travel to the, to the brain. Aluminum a lot of times also likes to be found in the brain. And when you start to use DMSO, it wants to chelate it. So it's a, it's a partial chelator. I, I've designed a heavy metal and parasite cleansing course. Uh, and I talk about all the different chelators, which ones are full chelators versus, um, partial. So DMSO is a partial which means it has that propeller action, but imagine it's propelling through the body to go out through the liver, but it's carrying a metal with it. If it if the DMSO aspect or the moiety is used up by the body while it's traveling, carrying that metal, it will resettle in the tissue of wherever it is. And people can get what's called Mad Hatter syndrome by using high doses of DMSO when they're very mercury toxic, because it will begin to mobilize the mercury in their head, and it will affect their thinking, their cognition. And if they're not, uh, if they're not aware, it can freak them out. I've had a two cases of it, uh, solvable, all solvable. Wow. But it again, it's this knowledge, it's awareness and understanding works and, and when to apply it. So, so I had to make a statement because, you know, people, unless they're educated, I just say a blanket statement, like don't use it if you have metal amalgams until you know what you're doing. If you do, I, I just recommend you get them out. I mean, save up your, your money and you, you're going to have to get them out of your mouth at some point. And I, I even say for the beginning of the course, I recommend not to do any chelation until that's actually done. Uh, and that, all of the beginning parts of my course is really about prepping the body. If you're prepped, it's like painting a wall, you know, y you've got to fill in the, the divots with the plaster. You ha might have to sand. So much work goes into the prep of the wall before you paint, right? And it's the same idea with your body. If you prep and make sure all the uh, roots of elimination are non-blocked, that your organs of elimination are upregulated, that you're, you're nourished with the cofactors that are going to be necessary to do the job of removing whatever is trapped in the body, stored in the bone or the brain or the fat cells, then you will not have the complications and complaints that a lot of people will get during detoxification, where there's a lot of symptoms, right? Um, detox signs and symptoms, which are uncomfortable, or at least mitigate it more so. And so preparing the body for detox is really wise. And that's why I really focused a lot on that at the beginning of that course, especially once we start unearthing metals that are settled somewhere, right? They're just, they're inert kind of, they're settled. They might be causing a tumor. They might be causing pr uh, pressure. They might be causing electrical disharmony in the body. They might be causing problems, but not active overt problems. But then once you begin to say, say the lead that's in everybody's bones, you start to chelate it. You know, if, if you don't want to feel uncomfortable, then just do a little bit of prep ahead of time uh, and make sure you're nourished and you're not poisoning yourself as you're healing yourself. That's ridiculous, right? Um, and you'll be successful. But the amount of stuff that we're exposed to is um, ever growing yeah. and alarming. Um, people are so easily um, swayed to put these things in their bodies like titanium and other synthetic materials um, that will leach. They leach constantly into the blood and your body's now has another body burden to always deal with. 
And so DMSO, if you do have like titanium implant stuff, if you use that on a regular basis, it'll clean out a lot of that stuff from the plasma. Uh, and as well, uh, one of the claims to fame of DMSO that I love is protection from x-ray radiation. Um, because if you take it prophylactically, it'll prevent any of the nucleic acid DNA breakages that uh, we see from uh, x-ray procedures and also scanners and things, uh, if you go to the dentist, this sort of thing. So if you take one teaspoon of pure DMSO in five ounces of water or juice before you, about within the hour before you attend such a thing, which you know, sometimes you can't avoid it. Um, then at least you're going with peace of mind that you're not adding insult to injury when you're trying to find out something like, like say you did break a bone, like you broke a bone, you got to go to the hospital, you got to figure that out, right? Well, take DMSO, we're going to rub it on there right away anyway, but you're going to take it orally before you go and get skin and prevent the secondary damage. So that's a really important thing that I just wanted to bring up for people, but just to be aware that it does move metals, it is a light chelator, uh, and what you have to do once you start to slough it is you got to keep going. <laughs> you just, you just can't, if it's stalled, don't freak out and go, oh, I got to stop it because it's bad. Instead you go, oh, I see what I did there. Now I have to follow through. And that's how you complete. I have, I've had a few cases where uh, people contacted me saying that they started using DMSO in a situation and things started to move and uh, then they stopped because of the discomfort or pain. There was actually a boy who had something going on with his gut and it moved it, whatever it was, but it made the pain in accelerate while it was moving. And so they, they reacted and stopped, contacted me. I said, no, you mustn't stop. <laughs> you must continue the, the movement out. And he had a crazy bowel movement uh, he must have eaten something synthetic, something he shouldn't have eaten. It was a child that puts things in his mouth. And, but we got it out of the body doing this. But you see, because they didn't know, uh, they stop. And so the same thing with the eyes, like I make eye drops that heal cataracts, literally heal cataracts. You don't need cataract surgery. You just need DMSO eye drops and it will get rid of the cataracts. Um, I mean, generally speaking, you do have to support the liver if it's like a long standing cataract situation, right? Because that's the connecting organ. So you do always want to consider that if you have something wrong with the eye, it's not your eye just, <laughs> it's right. the organs that are related, you know, to the eye. Mm -hmm. And so I had a woman, so just uh, with that movement thing, she had so much debris in her eye that the DMSO began to move it out and there's, there's the vein here. And she actually had a type of, um, uh, inflammation of the vein next to her eye. And she again was alarmed that it had happened and she contacted me and then we informed her, you know, this is what's happening. You're mobilizing heavy calcium bits right now. And, and I know you're now, you have this temporal arteritis <laughs> caused from the movement but understand this is a temporary inflammation from a deposit and you just need to uh, apply more of the DMSO to again, grab it and move it and it will eventually metabolize properly in the body. And that's what she did. And I've had a few of these cases as well. So that's one of the other things to be aware of with DMSO because people will say it's bad or dangerous or they'll do all kinds of things because they don't understand the mechanism of action. And they also do not understand how their bodies work and therefore they just react in fear. And so again, knowledge is power. And that's why I do so much teaching and help people understand it. That's why the book is there it is to uh, help you calm down and, and feel safe to use it, understand it and apply it correctly. And it's literally acts like miraculously when, when, when you see it in action like that, you know, it's quite profound. Yeah. I love it. I, I, this has been so amazing to talk to you about all this stuff and have you just lay it out here as you always do so gracefully. So as I love to just give props to people where it's needed, just thank you for all you do. And I said in the beginning, but the way you present this information as well is very appreciated because I feel like we just need more people like yourself out there, you know, at just presenting this uh, to the point straightforward but also having these stories to share is very important because I think that that helps people may feel more comfortable about that because maybe someone t 
tried DMSO, they had the same experience you're describing, but never really understood why until right now, until you told that story and said, oh, well, it's probably because I stopped. And that's why that makes a lot of sense. And I have heard a lot of the same kind of stories and have witnessed it myself with herbs this way, that literally herbs can have the same effect when taken in very small doses for a specific ailment and all of a sudden the ailment gets worse for a day or two. And then it's like, oh my God, what the heck? This herb isn't working. It's making me worse. And then the next morning you or the person wakes up and then they feel better. And it's the same thing. I think it's that attention, you know, that you're putting on whatever it is. Uh, energy flows where attention goes or attention goes where energy flows, whichever, however you want to say it. Uh, it's that same kind of thing. And just talking about the flow of everything with DMSO is it's a beautiful thing. Well, we're right yeah. about an hour. Oh, go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, if you I was like. just going to say, because you brought up an important point about symptoms, people label symptoms as bad. And that that's the allopathic modeling that, ha and the germ theory modeling as well, right. that when, when I have a, a set of symptoms that that's bad and they must go away. And if I make them go away, I'm healed. You know, like this is the, this linear thinking that's happened. And that's not healing and that's not what symptoms are. You know, the symptoms are the actions of the body healing. They are the output or the visualization of the body attempting to recover. And the symptoms are only visible if something is not going according to plan, meaning the body would have loved to do it the way where you didn't notice However, unfortunately, you've been eating Doritos and, uh, you know, uh, and turtles or whatever at Christmas and <laughs> you, you're, uh, you're zinc depleted and magnesium depleted and iodine depleted as most people are and sulfur depleted as majority of people are as well. So you're not processing your endogenous waste that you make every day just from being alive and your exogenous waste that you get from eating, drinking, breathing, living in this toxic world, you're not processing them. And now it's going to do a different mechanism to try to deal with it. It might have to produce a tumor. That's a symptom. It's not a disease per se. It's creating it because it's got nowhere else to go. It's got no other mechanism to release. Uh, or wall off because it's too volatile for the body to just have hanging around. When you get a runny nose, runny eyes, when you get, you know, mucus, it is attempting to clean and it is attempting to correct. And if, you, if your liver is congested, then it has to produce these alternate um, symptoms because it has to move and mobilize the, the wastes um, and make the corrections. And so we look holistically at symptoms as information. Is so instead of going, oh no, I got the thing that someone else has. You will, right. you never have the same thing as anybody else. Never in a million years will you ever get a thing from anyone else that it's you. Okay, it's all self responsibility time. It's all your own making. The whole thing. Okay, and if you realize that, you know, people will assume. Oh, well, they got it, except they had a cough too. Well, they got what? They, all, <laughs> all that happened is there's only like a handful of the same symptoms that any human can have, okay, at any given time. Like there's a, there's a rate limiting step here in how many symptoms one can produce. So the odds are you're going to have a similar set of symptoms when you're going through a purge, whether it's from the hot and cold trigger like we were talking about when springtime comes when the rainy season comes, when fall comes, whatever, that says it's time to clean up because your foods are supposed to change. The air and the moisture in the air is changing. The sunlight levels are changing. The body's prepping for whatever's coming next. And it can't do that if you've got crap in the way. Like if your house is just a mess and everything's on the floor, you're going to be tripping on the stuff. <laughs> that means you're going to have some, you, there's some visible symptoms there, right? And it's the same idea in the body. And we need to then, instead of react to what we're seeing, which I, I'm, I'm talking to parents all the time, taking them to calming them down about fever, calming them down about the things they think 
are terrible what they're witnessing and realize that that is the genius of the body that knows what it's doing, that is, has an innate intelligence. And if you tap into that intelligence, you can guide it, steer it gently. You can listen and then apply what it's asking for. And then you can get complete resolve of things that the modern conventional world will never say is curable. They will, <laughs> they will never uh, admit that these things can be corrected, like MS, okay? I've had lots of patients heal from MS. Usually it's mercury toxicity. Like 90% of those cases are mercury toxicity leading to gut uh, imbalances. Their liver's mess, their mess, their entire gut system's a mess. You start by healing the gut, then you cleanse them of the metals, then whatever tissue was damaged, nervous system, etc. you rehabilitate the tissue, and voila, no more MS. But in Instead, you know, the conditioning of the allopathic model will just give a drug to say, don't have that symptom anymore, body. Stop doing the thing that is trying to heal it. Take the drug, shut up <laughs> and sit down. And <laughs> first then we'll shut up. Send the patient out. <laughs> yeah, first shut up. Okay. And and then kick that ass out the door with all the money in hand or whatever. And they go with the heroic illusion that they've been saved. And this is the belief system. This is a something on faith. This is a religion. This is a cult. This isn't science or real medicine when you don't even understand the body and what it's trying to do. Like right there, it's a fail. <laughs> And then when we understand what symptoms are and we go, okay, we're not going to suppress, we're going to avoid suppression as much as possible. You can't always 100% avoid in all cases. Of course, there's a, a space and a place for suppression. I talk about that all the time. People say, well, what about emergency medicine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we don't need any red herrings. I know that emergency <laughs> medicine is there and that's great. And thank God and awesome. Thumbs up and whatever. It's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about you know, suppressing a natural phenomenon of the body out of fear or ignorance rather than listening to it and helping it move forward and having a full circle completion. And then it's over. And then you almost never get it again. Like another thing they talk about is HPV or any of the, uh, like, you can heal that. It never has to come back. You, genital warts, all this stuff. You use DMSO, Okay. Same thing with shingles. Use DMSO to help the body remove whatever is stuck in that nerve. There is toxic waste. I've gotten to that nerve belly and it wants to come out. And what it does is tries to push it out through the nerve, which is extremely painful and, uh, and through the skin. And so if you help it drain by using DMSO, and I actually make um, something called DMSO with added nutrients. So it has like a B vitamins and magnesium and iodine and that kind of stuff in it. So it's a, a, a helpful to, uh, like I was saying, a well-rounded protocol. And you put that on there and it will, and some people are like, oh my God, it got worse. The same thing. They're like, I got more. I got, it's, but the pain's gone, but, but I have more. I'm like, go, go, keep going. I'm like, you got this. Don't be afraid. You won't have scarring. Don't worry. Just go, go, go. And they go and they're like, oh my God, you were right. It's com completely resolved. The skin's better than ever, whatever. And that's gone forever. They don't get it again. Same stuff. They lie. They say, you, you once you have it, you're a carrier, this kind of bull crap. It, most of it is lies, really. Like, And I say that, honestly, like not from just, I don't know. I don't know where people think I'm. I, I talk from, but- I mean, this is 20 years of experiences and 15 years of clinical experience, okay? And and putting to test these things and seeing the results. And that's why practice is so helpful. But not only that, looking at and reading studies, which can be quite tedious. And after years of doing that, you just, you lose respect for the institutions. They present so sophisticated and tidy and uh, and well researched, where you feel like you could never be that. That's why we put doctors on pedestals because we think they must be so much better and smarter and so so sophisticated, you know. And it's <laughs> like, well, actually, <laughs> it's just a piece of shit, and they put like sprinkles on it and like sprayed it with like something to make it smell not like shit. But <laughs> I'll turn it down to it's a death cult. 
It's a death cult. They love the shit. They want your organs. They want your inf they want you infertile. Like it's when you go in deep into that, you're like that whole Rockefeller medicine system was set up for profit and demise, not for the goodness of whatever you people think it is. And it's the modern miracle and it's saved in this lives and this kind of nonsense. Absolute nonsense. It's iatrogenic death is the third largest killer of people. Iatrogenesis is doctor error. Okay. It would, doesn't even have to be error. Just doctor giving a medicine a suppressant and that person patient dying that goes into that statistic. Okay. Like that's third leading cause of death worldwide is doctors. All right. So like if we just took that in the mix, we'd be way better off. We would then also have to creatively figure it out. Right. We don't have that system. Anymore. That's what I'm literally doing now. I'm like pretending in my head. I don't have that system. That system isn't there. I mean, oh, I love that. I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada. It's not there. Trust me. It really isn't. Like, I think waiting room times in Canada in the emerge is over a day, a 24 hour wait period or longer to be seen in the, emer we're talking emergency that has a word meaning it's like an emergency meaning now. <laughs> like now. <laughs> but no. Not more new definition. Well, they like to make new definitions of things, right? Like when their vaccines fail and they, and then they want to claim that they've solved polio. They just rename polio into all, you know, gilling bars. And <laughs> they just do this game and people don't see the deception. Uh, and that's why this is the time now to like really be disciplined and brave and uh, and come out of your comfort zone. I mean, we're being forced out of our comfort zones anyway, but like do it willingly <laughs> with aplomb and learn this material because it's actually not as difficult as you think. It's like with anything new, right? You come to it new, like, whoa, where am I? I can't even orient myself into this. Like what? But then you do, and then you learn. And then you're like, yeah, that's second nature. That's nothing to me anymore. I totally know how to use colloidal silver if I get a scratchy throat, because I only will have strep there because my HEPA filter is clogged with crap. And usually it's vaccines that cause this problem. And we don't want to remove it. And we don't want to take out organs, which is insane, insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's an essential part of your longevity and healthy life. Instead, we're going to help it balance itself and try to control things from getting, you know, too far, oh, yeah, like crazy when, you know, you have, still have to treat. You can't just leave it right? You still have to understand why you're seeing the symptom and support it. So people say, well, I don't want to go to the doctor, but now what do I do? And that's why I created yummy.doctor, you know, like you will know and you can know, and it's not that difficult. And then you can have your home dispensary. You can have your favorite herbs, red raspberry leaf, one of my favorite herbs. I mean, grows all over the place, grows all through the season, yep. you know, and right into fall, I'm picking leaves and for drying. And you can douche with that. It's an astringent. It helps heal the gut. If you've got leaky gut, if you've got that throat thing, that strep thing I was saying, it can tighten and tone up tissues that way. You can use it on your skin. I mean, you can wash your hair with it. <laughs> like, there's so much you can do. But I always encourage people to just first step is when it's not winter. <laughs> but even in the winter, you can do this. But as a beginner, just wait till spring or summer <laughs> to do this. Go outside, get a, I use a plant app. I don't know. Do you use plant apps like identifier apps? Cause I have one I love and I just take a picture uh, of it. It tells me what it is. Yeah. It's awesome. I need to yeah, get a I good one because I, I don't have one. I just, no. I use, I use books, but I, I know a few of my friends are like, Oh, th this app is really great. And I always forget to ask like, which one do you have? But yeah, if you want to pass on the name of yours, because I would like yeah. to have one. Well, mine's called picture this. Okay. Picture this. And it's interesting. Like I've, I've used it for a long time and I, um, I haven't updated the app at all. So I have no idea if it's still free, but my one's free. 
uh, it does ask me to uh, create an account and pay and whatever. And I just close it. I just ignore that. I just keep ignoring it. <laughs> nice. Uh, and you can save the pictures to your gallery. And then if you want to go back and what's cool is like when you're learning the plant, there's plants at different stages. And the hardest thing is to identify the plant when in the spring, when it's just coming, you know, and I'm still learning that like to now I'm getting better, but you know, it takes time to identify. And then, but once you know it, it's there, you know, it, you, you can't make a mistake with it. Like you really get, like you said, there's like a spirit to these plants. And once you're intimate with it, once you've, you know, I, like you've ingested it, you're, you're, you're thoughtful with it. And when you, when you do wild crafting, and I always say this to people, don't just rip something out of the, like, be respectful. Like what I do is I, I make an offering to the plant. Um, if you have tobacco, tobacco, plants love tobacco. It's a communication herb. So I will crumble some and I will give it to my forest so they can talk better. So it's like a, an offering or gift. And then the medicine, I say, may I, may I please, you know, touch you? May I please uh, use your medicine for the good of mankind? Like, can, will, will you give that to me? And once I've established that relationship with the plant spirit, they know me. And I come, I'm like, how are you doing today? You know, and I only gently harvest a small percentage of it. And I do it in a very loving, delicate way. And I thank it after I say, thank you for your medicine. As I'm collecting. Thing, that's the mantra. Thank you for your medicine. Thank you for this medicine. Thank you. Like this. It makes a huge difference energetically how you interact with these frequencies because it's really what it comes down to. I mean, why do we take anything? Why do we put what happens when we digest? It digests right down to electricity so that things can continue to be mobilized, right? And once you get right down to the energy of it, it's um I think that's where we're headed actually in medicine is the energetics and understanding the frequencies and that we're, we're trying to resonate with that. Once you do with the plant kingdom, it opens up for you. I mean, I'm still discovering so many new, I thought ah, I figured out North America. I got North America sorted. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what's this? I'm like, what turtle head? What's a turtle head? Why did I ever see a turtle head? before like what is this where did it come from and so it's it's exciting and you can get your kids involved and but learn what's outside your door get a plant app learn like get intimate with that plant figure out what it's for figure out what you could use it for dry it and have some on hand and then you can make poultices i mean people don't even use this stuff properly anymore like you can use do enemas almost like so many herbs for enemas Right. Same thing with red raspberry leaf. I love that one in an enema, especially for colitis or Crohn's. Really, really helpful. Ooh, yeah. 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 For that. Yeah. But just so there's just so much available. We 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 don't need to feel limited that we have to pop a pill, like go, you know, in this aspirin a day nonsense. I mean, DMSO replaces your aspirin. Aspirin's over. Okay. <laughs> Aspirin is finished. You got your white willow bark, like you said, if you want a natural aspirin, or you got your DMSO or the two together. There's your blood thinning. There's your um, clot, you know, busting. Like people who took the clot shot should oh. be using DMSO. I mean, to break up the clots. <laughs> yeah, like that's to a top remedy to clean up that system. Or someone who's on warfarin, which is literal rat poison. Um, to come off it slowly and then start to bring in DMSO and you get rid of the clot and they'll, they tell people that you have to be on this thing for the rest of your life. Oh, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, you're going to have to be on warfarin forever. Like what? Oh, why? Cause you have like the mortgage that I have to pay for <laughs> your mortgage. Is that why? Right. Like, yeah, no, thanks. We're good. Like, it's just as we see the BS, you know, more and more as the big thing should be empowering. I think it's meant to be empowering rather than it's scary. It's, you know, um, the trepidation of it. Just, just take the plant by the balls, you know, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man. I second so many of the things you're saying and I love hearing your, um, uh, your personal, your personal ritual with, with harvesting and, I find the same thing is so valuable is making that connection, being grateful, being thankful. And even I have areas of the forest that I return to frequently and I say hello to certain trees and certain plants that I have 
made re relationships with and I hear them, feel them say hello back to me, you know, and I think there's something special too about for people who, you know, maybe getting into harvesting or making herbal medicine. I think there's something that the plant really enjoys when you sit next to it and you actually make the medicine right there. It's like, it's witnessing wow. you're, sh you're showing the plant like, Hey, thank you. And guess what? I'm going to do you a second good. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with you. And then I'm going to imbibe that into my tincture and show you what I'm making, creating with, with what you just, uh, you know, imparted on me. And it, I feel like that in and of itself too, like creates this stronger synergy. And then that goes into the medicine and then the intention that you have while you're pouring, you know, your solution, whatever you're using, whatever menstruum you're going to use or whatever. And so there's mm -hmm. so many little things that you can do to create these relationships. And it's really cool to hear what you like to do because that was some of the stuff I really wanted to get into, but we're already at an hour and 20 and I want to <laughs> respect your time this evening, but man, I had, yeah, there were so many places that I wanted to go and we went to a lot of them and I wanted to say, I'm glad you brought up the HPV because that's something else that I really, uh, I'm passionate about talking about because it is such a thing. It's, it's huge. There's so many, People that have been told they have it, they had it. Oh my God, what is it? It's never been isolated. PCR tests are used to detect it. You and Alice, Dr. Alice Bailey were actually um, the two women that put it on my radar that, hey, there ain't nothing to worry about here. And they're going to sell you really invasive, unnecessary procedures and vaccines to try and get you to feel like you are in danger. But I feel like, you know, uh, we can talk about that maybe at some other time, maybe uh, down the road, we'll be able to chat again because I know that we'll have a lot. We have a lot more that we could talk about. But before I let you go, uh, customary, want to give you the floor so that you can allow people to who may have not heard the intro in the beginning, allow them to uh, know where they can find you and anything else that you wanted to say. And I also want to say that I uh, joined your membership and I want to encourage people to do that as well, because as we were talking about, you are creating all these courses and showing sharing your knowledge. It's awesome what you're doing. And I really appreciate the membership and the, just what you're opening up for people. You're going to, you, you have already changed a lot of lives and you're going to do so much more. So thank you again. And the floor is yours, my lady. Thanks for being with me. Thanks, Michelle. It was great. It was wonderful. I love talking. I love talking shop. <laughs> Um, I don't get it enough. I used to go to a lot of conferences and that was really exciting for me. But when I got um, sort of kicked out of the club, if you will, it, you know, all that went to the wayside. So anytime I can talk with other practitioners, <laughs> I get really excited. Um, yeah, you know, yummy.doctor is definitely my brainchild and I'm, I'm glad you join and, you know, it's, it's growing every day and I like the pace that it's growing. I, Every really tend what I see anyway is that a lot of people in with the social media they they're really vying for attention, or they're they they think the numbers have to be hot, really high to help people or to do what they're doing, and I don't agree because I, I'm seeing now more niches forming that are very family based and community based, and you can only know so many people, you can only carry so much, you know, you can um, we don't I don't need to have like. 2 million, <laughs> three million, that's not reasonable or rational or even manageable. I think what, what is happening is we're finding each other and we're finding our tribe and we're finding the, the ways in which we live that work because everybody has a different culture and a different way of living. And, and we're aligning those values and goals. Um, and I, and I really like seeing that because, you know, I had the experience of going viral and then being, uh, uh blacklisted. And ah. there's no, there's really nothing, no social media that runs away from me anymore, ever. I mean, I'll never hit off a viral video. It just, um, so it used to upset me how unfair that was. And, and to be targeted was really upsetting to me for a long time. I felt quite bitter and, um, I had to really work through all the emotions of, of uh, being treated like that from, uh, an unseen force, you know, where I, I can't really, um, I can't really face to face that person. I, it's not like I can, I can rectify the situation. I'm, um, there's, no, there's, it's a faceless entity. So I had to come to terms with all that. And then same idea with when I was trying to figure out my vocation, 
uh, things go the way they're meant to go. And if you look for the gifts in what you think is an error or a mistake or shouldn't happen, that whatever it is, if you if you sit with that, you see there was another story behind that story that had to unfold. And you are a character in that story, and you know you're playing that role, and you're learning your lessons, and that um, this linear goal of I don't know what I don't know what has been driven into people to become famous. Is that it, or to just get enough enough fanfare that they feel worth like it's a worth I'm not worthy. <laughs> oh no, you know, yeah, I was just gonna do that. <laughs> got it always. Um, you know, and like where but or it's just entrainment, entrainment to be noticed, entrainment or or it's money driven, whatever. But it's like if you really want to have true wealth and well-being, that's that linear straight path that's not it's not the goal. The goal is to nourish yourself and your knowledge and then to find that gift and then offer that gift. And, and when you're living like that, it all starts to come the way it's supposed to. And you don't have to push, you know, um, you don't have to um, force anybody, you know, and, and the people will find you and, and no matter what it, it, it will happen like that. So, um, and that, that was something I had to go through. And I wanted to mention that because um, a lot of people are struggling right now, you know, they're with the, in the world, obviously, <laughs> or there's like, cre it's, we're pretty, we've created a situation for ourselves where we're actually way more safe than mo the majority of the rest of the world. Like we're, so we have to maintain our energy properly in through this and we can't allow the destruction and the changes around us to pull us into it, to let us go, like, not my circus, not my monkeys kind of thing where we're, we're the anchors of the changes. We don't need to suffer with the other people suffering. We need to bring the suffering out of their suffering. So that means you have to be stable and anchored in order to do that. Obviously you, you know, um, the virtue signaling thing is people, um, sinking themselves into this quagmire rather than really doing the energetic work of changing the reality around them. And that thereby will allow for those people to model it and lift themselves. And so living by example is the way to go um, as, as best as you possibly can. And that will keep you safe because when you live like that, the abundance is natural. It, 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 it's not forced. You will be gifted with things. And as long as you're listening, you will see when they're coming and you can, you can um, accept and continue to grow rather than this um, grasping that's going on. <laughs> The you desperation. Know, thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a downward spiral energy, um, and so if you're in fear, desperation, these kinds of energies, then you're in imbalance already. You're, and the way out is the way in. And then once you're in, you go through. You feel the sensations and own them, and then you transform them, and you just continue to do that. Um, eat, eating your own shadow. I actually made Ooh, a Facebook. I like that. I, I made a Facebook group. Yeah. What one time it. Uh, I've let it go, but I call I called it eating shadow for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, because like that's the it's like what's the most warrior thing you could say? You know, it's like eating shadow for breakfast, bitches. You know, like <laughs> I get up and I just consume my own shadow, and like that's the work. Like, where are the unseen, hidden um, bits of your life that are causing chaos? And if everybody did that, this, whatever's going on out there would be done. It would be a non-event, you know? And that's why I promote it and I live it and I do it because that's what's going to get us through the next, you know, 10 years of all of these crazy changes. So I just wanted to leave with that because, you know, I feel, I sense the desperation energy out there as an empath. It's been challenging, like, to um, know what my feelings are versus whatever that is. Hence why I'm in a forest, but still, even in the forest, I can pick it up. And it's, uh, it's a, there's a nihilistic energy coming now and don't care. Don't care. Don't, we cannot allow, we cannot allow the don't care. Don't care. Uh, we, if you, if you're there, then you must sit in meditation immediately. Okay. <laughs> Stop all else and turn off the, turn off the phone and meditation and with that because we must and 
uh, we have to care about ourselves and the world and how our and our place in it and the lineage is coming. And if not, they've won. They've totally won. If it's like, oh, it's all going to hell in the handbasket. Oh, the economy's bust. Oh, blah, 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 blah. What can I do? Change is irrelevant. Nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Then that's ex they got you where they want you. That's where they want you. Um, and uh, and so I've been seeing a lot of black pilled people and nihilistic people lately. And and I understand. I do. <laughs> I've been there. Don't worry. I get it. Right. Wallow in it. Like wallow in it for five minutes. Do your do like be own it for a second and then transform it. Like get out of that shit. You yeah. are so much value. People have to, um, this is the time. This is the time now, like I said, to be disciplined, to do the work. There's a lot to care about. There's everything to care about <laughs> life itself. So oh my God. anyway, yeah, yes. you can find me, you can find me yummy doctor. You can find me at all my websites and stuff, everything. you got everything there. So, so that's yeah. all I want. I want to close on. Awesome. I love it. And that, that nihilistic stuff at the end of the day, I think it's, it's like lazy. It's a cop out. It's kind of like a cop out just for not taking personal responsibility because then if nothing matters, it's like the atheist sort of, you know, scientism kind of thing that comes through of just like, what well, nothing matters. Love's just a chemical. I don't feel love. What is love? You know, it's just like, well, yeah, I think it's just lazy on your part to not then understand or explore what it might be, what it really means. So at the heart of it, I, that's what that's where I always come from to it or come to with it is like, yeah, OK, it's lazy. So, <laughs> yeah, it's la it's lazy. But but then you go like anytime I, I, I think I describe something, I go, OK, now what's the deeper side of lazy? OK, what like uh, I always go one, one layer under. Right. Because when I feel lazy right? Because I felt lazy before. And I look at that, look at my laziness or whatever I'm describing as laziness. I just feel tired. Like I, I'm feeling exhausted or tired or burnt out or overwhelmed or overwhelmed or hyper stimulated uh, or dysregulated. And, and I can't cope. And then, so from the outside world, it looks like laziness, right? But I really feel like a lot of these people are suffering from those things and they just, they just can't. And, and it, it looks like sloth. I mean, I know there's genuine sloth that's really there. I know yeah. that's an ego state. Totally understand. But I do, I do see as, as that also, you know, there's this, there can be underlying um, reasons as to why people just, they just don't have the, don't want to, they don't want to. Um, I mean, my daughter, who's 12, she doesn't want to, but she's 12. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to when I was 12 also. So I totally, I know the, those phases, but I'm talking as an adult, you know, when you just don't want to do it um, because it's, it's, it's hard work. Life is hard work. I mean, it really is. A, that's why I see it as a school or, or I see it yeah. like a, like a challenge or, or a game. I don't know, whatever you want to kind of put onto it. But uh, it's not a cakewalk. <laughs> That's not, I mean, just the fact that we're all going to, to expire to die at some point, that alone can debilitate people. It's like the, the, one of the top fears is, is death, right? Um, that alone is a challenge for life, <laughs> you know, that you feel this limited linear life and you have to figure out some sort of meaning from this. And you know, that, that can weigh on people that can be heavy for people. Um, so I just, yeah, I, I know that a lot of what we're seeing right now is psychological manipulation, the outcome of the terror campaigns that have been propagandized to us for quite some time. And in, I remember reading how they did this in Russia or USSR or any communist country. Um, there was a gentleman, Yuri, I forget his last name, begins with a B, who was talking about the dangers of uh, socialism and communism that, by the way, every single experiment done in either of those isms has failed miserably and everyone dies. So just so you know, uh, <laughs> it's not capitalism. That's the problem. It's that. It's that spectrum. But th the, the idea is that, you know, um, when everything's taken care of by mommy and daddy, 
who cares? Play video games all day. Be lazy. Whatever, right? This is the handout, the nanny state, and that's communism. And then, it, but then there's no meaning. There's no try hard. There's no get being better than other people. There's no striving, and so we lose that competitive edge, and we just turn in. What's that? Where the rope have the floating chairs and they just float through like they don't get out of their chair they just ride around in chairs it's like a cartoon movie and it's like that you know where this is what they're trying to turn us into like virtual reality illusionists that don't work that that don't aren't involved in the world that don't have bring meaning that don't build big families that don't work the land that don't get sunburnt while farming you know, or whatever like <laughs> this this technological um sloth really and that's where they want us so um that's why we have to fight against the nihilism because the end result of socialism and communism is nihilism who cares so that's that's our awareness that um you know will change the way we approach our own energies and combat our own psychological programming that they're working on us uh with so yeah, here we are and we're going to do it. We're going to make it. I mean, we're my my team, we have our own bank. We've created we're creating a bank. Wow. A bank. Bank. Uh uh Mike Winner's making our his own internet. We're going to have our own internet. Like all the things you're worried about we won't have. Don't worry. We'll have. Like <laughs> and it'll be better without usury. So it's it's going to be just fine. But People don't know what's happening, you know, behind the scenes. And there's good things happening behind the scenes. So there is hope. We've got a lot of work to do. Please don't give up. We need everybody on board and we need involvement, interaction, training, learning, and support. And that's how we're going to get through this. So there we go. Wow. Kudos, my lady. Thank you so much. And uh, I like that extra layer. Thank you for bringing that extra layer beyond the laziness because you're right, because it's it's probably unresolved trauma. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's yeah. unresolved trauma that has you deer in headlights and then you just kind of, OK, we'll just default to whatever this mode is because this feels comfortable and cozy and it doesn't feel cozy over there. So yes. thanks for bringing that and uh, sharing all your wisdom. I will let you go for the evening and uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Michelle. And thank you for everyone here. It was lovely to see all the comments and, uh, and we'll do this sometime again. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Have a lovely evening. You too, Michelle. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Take care. All righty, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out. I decided that I wasn't going to look too much at the chat because I didn't want to be distracted. I wanted to really make sure I was paying attention and being present in that moment. But I really appreciate everybody was here in the chat. And I am really looking forward to kind of scrolling through the comments and hearing what you guys had to say. And as always, I've got updates for you guys. For anyone who wants to stick around, I'm going to throw some slides up here that I can share with you guys so you can get my updates if you want to hear. Michelle'sHealingHome.com for all things Healing Home, as I said in the beginning of the show. If you have any questions about what I do, head to the website. Everything is there, and you'll be able to find all the things Healing Home there. Thank you to all the patrons. You guys are awesome and really appreciate all the support. Chance, Sarah G, Liam, Miri and Hank, Jenny G, Erica, Moonlander, Mary, Louie, Logan, M Mickey, Doreen, Debbie, Natasha, Mary Beth, Nausicaa, Stephanie, Jennifer, Sharalai, Peter, Elise and James, Amy, Rachel, Trisha, and Vanessa. Thank you all so very much. Patreon.com slash The Healing Home if you want to join us over there in the Patreon. And all patrons were informed already of the full moon offering that's coming out tomorrow. So that's one of the perks of being a patron. You get to hear what I'm creating and releasing on the full moon. 
And we talked a little bit about animal care tonight with Amanda and my handbook for herbal and natural cat care is now available. It is my ebook that I just finished up this month. And so that is available on my website, on my store. It is a downloadable PDF that you can print out. You can keep on your computer. It's very reasonably priced because I want more people to know how they can care for their cats with herbs and natural remedies because I had such great success with our dude, Carl. And that work is dedicated to my sweet Bubba boy, Carl. Full Moon Offering newsletter number 40 is still currently here because the moon is full tomorrow. So I still have one set of my Radiant uh, Glow cleansing grains and I have one bar of my Mugwort Earth Hag soap left from last month. So you can find that on my website if you're interested in that. And up on the screen is my current menu of offerings that I have. I just made a fresh batch of my skin and wound salvation balm, which is such a great all-purpose first aid salve to have on hand with chaparral and yarrow, black walnut. There is also um, some black walnut husk and leaf in there, as I said already, uh, plantain. It's it's a wonderful salve, just all-purpose first aid. So it's, it's really wonderful. That is available. And the Full Moon Offering newsletter is coming out tomorrow, so I will be dropping that. So if you haven't signed up for the newsletter already, you can do so at michelleshealinghome.com and you get my monthly newsletter. I only send out one newsletter a month, so I'm not going to be you know, bombarding your inbox, but it's the best way to keep in touch with me and find out the remedies that I have available, uh, my recent appearances, who I'm having on the Healing Home, anything special, recipes and all that stuff will be in the newsletter. Next week, I have Melissa Sell. I recorded with Melissa on Friday, so we talked German New Medicine. And uh, this, this was a great interview. I'm really excited to premiere it next week on January 30th at 4 p.m. So we had a wonderful conversation. I really enjoy German New Medicine and where it puts us when it comes to what causes illness. And we had a really good conversation. So come back to the Healing Home next week, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, January 30th, next Tuesday for our conversation. I was just on with Topher Gardner, the Bio Charisma podcast, and Topher and I had a really nice conversation. We talked a lot about actually Saturn Capricorn, because we, we were in Capricorn season when we recorded, we talked about plants and we got to know each other. We ended up talking about the uh, dynamics between males and females and our roles, traditional roles, what that looks like, people living in their roles and assuming their roles and how healthy that is. And so anyway, check that out at the Bio Charisma podcast, topherhq.com. He is on Spotify and Telegram. Symbolicstudies.com for all things Mario. Anything that you'd like to learn about him, check out his videos, check out what he's up to. He has been plugging away at the design work like a wizard and is getting ready to drop his one, a couple Aquarius videos that are becoming coming out soon. So you can head to his YouTube channel to find that. You can follow him on Instagram and Twitter as well. And with all that said, folks, that's gonna do it for this evening. What a lovely ride that was this evening. I'm so excited to have had Amanda on and to have shared this conversation with you all. So thank you all so very much for being here again in the chat. It was great. I look forward to more episodes coming out and I hope you guys are doing well out there. I hope it's warmed up a little bit where you're at. So until next time, take care out there and we'll see you soon. Cheers. <music>